after the war, with Europe devastated, this is where the new frontiers of flying would be pushed back by some well-funded and brilliantly organized research called the X program. Within 10 years, this program would force new aircraft through the sound barrier and on to speeds of 2,000 miles an hour. 10 years after that, it would bring them to the edge of space. The sound barrier, Mach 1, was the first challenge. Others had tried to pass through it and lost their lives in the attempt. So an experimental aircraft, the X-1, was built to confront it. Its pilot was World War II ace Chuck Yeager. The X-1 was mine because the old man said, OK, it's your program, get with it. See? And the only reason he picked me was because I was trained in maintenance and I understood systems and obviously could fly an airplane. We didn't look at ourselves as heroes, pioneers, or anything else. It's if we didn't do it, somebody else would. No airplane had ever flown much above 90% of the speed of sound until we got the X-1 up there. Every flight that we made, we were in a region where no one had ever had an airplane before. In fact, we didn't even have any wind tunnel data in that region. So it was every day something new. On October 14, 1947, a B-29 with the Jaeger aboard and his X-1 slung beneath it took off. Jaeger probably shouldn't have been flying. I was hurting because I'd been in a horseback riding accident. I broke a couple ribs and hurt my shoulder a couple nights before. And uh, I wasn't feeling too good. But the point was uh, I made the decision to fly the airplane. Came back into Bombay, got on the ladder, and and they slid the ladder down to your opposite the nose on the X-1, and you're sitting there about 12,000 feet above the ground, the wind blowing on you, you slide in feet first. That's the way you got into the X-1. Five, four, three, two, one, drop. The flight itself just went as expected. Uh, We'd been having a lot of trouble with fires in the tail of the airplane and igniters that wouldn't work. Fortunately, they all worked that day, and, uh, and we pushed the thing out. And really, uh, once we got the mock jump on the mock meter and all the buffeting smoothed out, and we got our first sonic boom here, then it almost was a letdown, you know, if the damn thing didn't blow up. The combat experience I had made me a very disciplined pilot, meaning that I learned to control my emotions and feelings toward the outcome. It didn't make any difference to me whether the X-1 blew into a million pieces or not. See, because I couldn't do anything about it, so I put it out of your mind. And you do that in combat. We realized that the so-called sound barrier really restricted us from going any faster. And once we got the X-1 above the speed of sound and smoked on out the Mach 2 and then beyond, you see, we realized, hey, this opens up the whole universe for us. 